Every morning this week, straight after breakfast, Angela Rippon, Gloria Hunniford, Julia Somerville, they're busy putting the world to rights in live editions of Rip Off Britain. Angela joins us now from Rip Off, Rip Off Britain's studio for us now. Morning to you. Morning, Charlie and Naga. Yes, we're fighting on behalf of all of our viewers once again, and yours too, of course, who sent us their stories and their questions to investigate. And today, we're going to be comparing the most effective ways to complain. And when I say we, I mean me, Julia and Gloria, of course. Yeah, um, now, are you polite? Or are you a ranter? Now, we're also going to be looking into the shocking case of a couple who paid for their most precious belongings to go into storage and then never saw them again. I've talked to the man that they trusted with those possessions. On top of that, we've got tips on slashing the cost of your car insurance. And we're going to be outside with the experts at our pop-up shop, tackling your problems while we're live on air. You can contact us right now on our Facebook page, BBC Rip Off Britain, or by email at ripoffbritain at bbc.co.uk. And uh, we look forward to your company at 9.15. See you then. See you then. Thank you. Thanks. Rip Off Britain Live is on BBC One, 9.15 today, as you heard Angela say, and every morning this week. Rip Off Britain, we're live with more advice on the topics that matter to you the most. And we know that because all our stories come from you. So on behalf to get out of situations you should never have ended up in. Um, oh boy, do we have a classic example of that coming up. Now we thought we'd heard it all, but you just wait until you hear the twists in this particular tale. A very good morning to you and thanks for joining us for another packed edition of Rip Off Britain Live. We really are enjoying being here this week and I must say we've been quite overwhelmed by the response to our programme so far this week. Absolutely. A huge thank you for the hundreds of emails and messages you've sent us. And we're really thrilled to see so many of you getting stuck into our conversations on our fabulous Facebook page. Mm. I wonder what will get you fired up today. <laughs> well, there's plenty of material in the programme. And, of course, you can email us while we're on the air at ripoffbritain at bbc.co.uk. And we'd be especially keen to hear your most successful tactics when it comes to complaining, because we're going to be comparing two very different techniques a bit later on. Now, also coming up, we reveal the best ways to slash the cost of your car insurance. We're outside again tackling your problems at our pop-up shop. Our legal expert, Gary Rycroft, is back by popular demand as is Sylvia Rook from Trading Standards. And we're also going to be hearing from another consumer queen, <laughs> Esther Ranson, who as you can imagine has quite a few tricks up her sleeve when it comes to being savvy with her money. But before all of that, more on a story that had a real impact when we featured it on our main series last month, prompting more of you to get in touch with similar experiences. And the developments that you've told us about since that really do beg the question, how on earth does the man who's at the heart of this situation keep getting away with it? Incredibly upsetting story there. Now, uh, lots of people who work in restaurants contacted us after our item on tipping yesterday. Michelle O'Donnell was one of them. She says she likes the way things are done where she's a waitress. She's a waitress and it works like this. She keeps 75% of her tips and 25% is given to the kitchen staff with no fee being kept back by the restaurant itself. Now, and I'm sure that actually that's what happens in an awful lot of restaurants too. No surprises at all that the food allergy story that we did yesterday prompted a huge response. Mercy Williams emailed to say that despite her boyfriend making very clear when ordering a takeaway that he had a severe nut allergy, within two mouthfuls his lips were swelling and he was struggling to breathe. I think it just goes to show that uh, it really is vital that restaurants get this absolutely right. And what I would say is if that happens, report them to trading standards because they are breaking the law and putting your life at risk. Absolutely. Well, I rather like this comment that Wendy Merkel uh, posted on Facebook about the new laws we were talking about um, yesterday. She says, bearing in mind it's an EU directive, OK, she was shocked to find that when she went to Brussels, 
restaurants there weren't able to advise on food allergies either. <laughs> well, I have to say that I was in France recently and an awful lot of the restaurants there did have a lot of information about allergies, so it's clearly very patchy. Mm. But I think you personally may like the comment that we got from Julie Lewis. And she said that after hearing you croak your way through the programme yesterday, <laughs> she said, poor Julia, what a trooper, but the show must go on. And actually, you're sounding even more like Marlene Dietrich today. <laughs> I specifically told my frog to stay in my bag and it's insisted on jumping down my throat. What can you do? <laughs> Now, every morning we've been catching up on the latest developments on stories we've covered in the past, and here are some more. Indeed, and in fact, in the newspapers today there's good news for consumers because the results of an official investigation into the big banks is due to be published. Well, according to the headlines, there's going to be a crackdown on bad service, and there's advice that switching your account to a different bank could save as much as £70. Which is good, and also service is about the only thing they can give you because they don't give you any kind of interest, so there you go. Also in the papers with half term coming up, there's lots more criticism of how holiday costs rocket out of term time. And there's the result of a Scottish court case that saw a couple awarded a thousand pounds compensation after they missed their EasyJet flight because staff shortages meant that there was a long queue at the check-in. Can you believe it? Well, the airline was arguing that it was the passenger's responsibility to arrive on time, but the sheriff presiding on the case completely disagreed. He described the couple as blameless. Meanwhile, hold the front page. Here is a <laughs> biscuit map of Britain showing who eats what where and apparently it's custard creams in the north posher brands in the south and Brighton loves a Kit Kat oh, I like a jammy dodger myself <laughs> but there you go now next if you think you're paying more than ever for your car insurance well according to the figures you're right but here's how you can bring those costs down and a taste of how one day they might even disappear altogether now, I've got a little quiz for you. What's the word you can add after all these? Here we go. Parliamentary, local government, financial, European, legal, property, housing, prison and probation, energy, telecommunications, and from January this year, retail. The answer is ombudsman. Well, I'm joined now by the new chief retail ombudsman, uh, Dean Dunham. Uh, Dean, so many ombudsmen. Do we really need another one? We do, I'm afraid. There are lots of ombudsmen, but let's say this. These schemes are very, very good for consumers because it means when you have a dispute with a trader, you can now go somewhere for free and have someone look at it and decide who's right and who's wrong. In my case, we're now the retail ombudsman. There was never a retail ombudsman previously, so unfortunately we did need another one. And is an ombudsman somebody who's just an arbiter? An ombudsman is an independent and impartial organisation that looks at a dispute, looks at the consumer side, looks at the trader side and decides who's right and who's wrong and sometimes tries to resolve that dispute like a mediator. But have you got the power to enforce your decision or your opinion? I mean, is it a decision or an opinion? It's actually a decision and it depends. If the trader, in my case if the retailer, is a member of the retail ombudsman, they are bound by what we say. They sign up to that to say, we will be bound by what you say as a retail ombudsman. And what about the scale of the, of the shops and the retailers that you're dealing with? Are we talking about our corner shop or are we talking about big stores? Well, luckily enough, we're talking about everybody, from your one-man band on the corner of the high street or just the website, right up to the big brands on the high street. All of them are signing up. We are in our first year. We've got nearly 10,000 so far, which is a big number. But even the retailers that are not members are following our decisions, and, which is good. And how do you contact your ombudsman? I mean, you might, you know, you've bought something in a shop, it's not working. How do I contact the ombudsman? Here's the good news. From the 1st of October this year, we had a new law that came out. And that new law says that all traders, in my case retailers, have to tell the consumers of an authorised scheme. Now, in retail, that's the retail ombudsman. So, traders are helping consumers in this case. But where are we going to find out the details? We can go online, so in Retail Ombudsman there's a website which is retailombudsman.org.uk. In other cases you can go on to Citizens Advice website, that's very useful to tell you about Ombudsman. But as I say, let's hope that traders do follow the new law and help consumers to go where they need to go. Dean, thanks very much Thank indeed. You. Over to you, Gloria. Well, today it feels like we've really got the hang of exactly how to complain, which is good. And we're getting better at it too, aren't we? <laughs> and someone who knows all about doing just that is Esther Ransom. But um, I have to tell you, she doesn't always take her own advice. <laughs> hey, Sarah, what happens if someone blows in your ear? It pins back me lago. <laughs> Dame Esther Ransom was the original consumer champion, fronting the top rate of That's Life for something like 21 years, then going on to set up two groundbreaking charities, First Child's Line, and then more recently, The Silver Line. 
So with all that expertise, you might be very surprised that even Esther occasionally gets caught out. Well, I did something very stupid very recently, which is I took on a painter to decorate my house without actually asking for a personal reference. And uh, he did such a lousy job that when he offered to put it right, I said, no, you're so bad at this, I'm going to get someone else. So I had to pay twice. <laughs> Don't you think that's terrific? Now, how are you as a consumer? I want to get to the personal bit. OK. Well, I am a split personality. <laughs> if you ask me advice, I will go and do my homework and I will find out the facts and I will tell you exactly what's what. Don't ask me about my own life. Do you never listen to your own advice? Well, I'm slightly form-phobic. I am nervous of filling up forms. I haven't switched my energy supplier. I'm hopeless. So I have to have someone else to sort me out. Do you think that you have inherited any tips or procedures, say, from your mother? You know, things that have been handed down over the years? Pay no attention to sell-by dates or use-by dates. If it smells OK, eat it. <laughs> if it isn't actually growing green hair, it's probably <laughs> edible. <laughs> and have you followed that advice? Always. My children go through my fridge from time to time, hurling everything out. <laughs> Horrified by, you know, me cutting the mould off the jam and the pickles. <laughs> Esther, it's lovely to see you as always. And you, Thank and you. you, Gloria. She's been very modest. She's just got to say, it's Esther Ranson here, and they absolutely fall at her feet. But I love it when she says she's hopeless. <laughs> I think that's great. Well, fortunately, we've uh, got time to answer some of the questions that you've been sending uh, for our experts to answer while we've been live on the air. Um, Gary, one for you here from Helen Bygrave. She says um, she's privately rented for 10 years on an assured short-hold tenancy, but her current landlord is selling up and she wants to know where she stands legally. Sounds like one for you, definitely. Well, I would say stay put until you are served the proper notice. If she is an assured tenant, she's entitled to two months' written notice given on a rent day. So until she gets that piece of paper, stay exactly where she is. A sit-in, really. A sit-in. <laughs> she may be wise to start looking for somewhere else. Uh, <laughs> Sylvia, I've got one for you. Gaynor Hughes has got in touch to say... This is all about building work again. She had some building work done by friends, and unfortunately the work wasn't great. She paid £1,500 mm. and wants to know if she can get any of her money back but she's got absolutely no paperwork because of his friends it's a big risk mixing business and pleasure but having getting friends to do work is always a risk if they are in business if they are traders then she does have the right that the work should be done with reasonable care and skill and she could in theory sue them but it's probably not very good for the friendship I think I just appeal to the friendship don't mm. you think yeah and it's difficult when there's no paperwork it always mm. makes things extremely difficult I think it's an important point if you're having work done always get something in, in writing saying exactly what's going to be done get it all agreed and be wary of spoiling a friendship mm. there's mm. a handy fact sheet on the Ripoff Britain website oh right. <laughs> thank you of there course there is, is. <laughs> um, another one for you Sylvia from uh, Dorothy Baylor. She wants to know how long should a company take to acknowledge a complaint? She sent two letters and had no reply to either. It's not laid down in law, but it's a good customer service. When you write a letter, it's always a good idea to put a deadline on the letter and ask for a response within 14 days, because then you know if they're not going to respond. And I would say, send things recorded delivery, um, send it to the, the customer services manager or even to the, the chief executive officer, send it to the top, and then you should get a response. But it is difficult, and, and we are getting more and more complaints about people who are just writing their letters and getting no response at all. It's very poor. Mm. You know, I love being live because it means we can react immediately immediately to things that viewers can, uh, ring in about, they go on Facebook, they email, and we've had loads and loads of sympathetic, sympathetic comments for Barbara. Uh, we saw her earlier, if you remember. Oh, that was very People, emotional, it really, was. wasn't it? Still, People yeah. saying they think the police should be taking this matter further. And I think we so all do, do too, don't mm. we? <laughs> Absolutely. Mm. So, Greater Manchester Police, if you're watching, You've been warned. We're after you. <laughs> Holly Waller was watching yesterday and realised that a voucher in her purse had not long expired. She contacted the company. They extended the voucher for a cost of £9. I suppose that's better than nothing, isn't it? If it's a big voucher, it's definitely worth getting extended. But I still it? don't understand if you get a, a voucher or you know something for a, a piece of goods and you have paid for the goods, why wouldn't they extend the voucher? <laughs> You know, otherwise I think it's wrong. What was it the guy said yesterday? Yeah. Money, you know, there's no, there's no expiry date on money. As my mum <laughs> said, true. nothing wrong with my money, but there is something wrong with your service. And exactly. at that point, <laughs> we're going to leave it for today, but we're back for our final live programme at exactly the same time tomorrow, when we'll be revealing the safest way to invest 
without losing your cash. That'll be interesting. And we're also going to be testing whether experience trumps age when it comes to knowing your rights, because we're going to be pitting a team of award-winning young consumers against their older, but not necessarily betters. We'll see. Sean <laughs> Williams is our final famous face sharing their spending habits. And we'll catch up on some of the stories we've looked at this week. So, see you tomorrow, 9.15 sharp from all of us here. Bye-bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye.